Yes. Uh, we notice here is whenever you guys are given the information, before you even try doing anything, let's go ahead and sketch a picture, right? And we can all do this no matter what we're doing because you're going to be given information, and what we have to do is try to identify. So let's just sketch a triangle. Now, again, we can assume that this is an acute oblique triangle, meaning all acute angles. <coughs> <coughs> but we know there could be an issue here is 68, that's going to be 18, A would be 19. Okay? But we know that if in, when we have the case of our, um, our ambiguous case, we could have an issue with that being, um, we could have an issue with this being, it could be an obtuse triangle as well, right? And we'll, and we'll, we'll look at that uh, when that comes up. However, based on this information, we see that we have uh, angle side side. So it is the ambiguous case, meaning we could have information that doesn't even create a triangle. We could have just this one triangle that I drew up there, or we could have two possible triangles. And again, I'll re go over that again as we get to it. But the first thing is we could all just self ray, right? Is it, we can just go at least self ray. Okay. Um, so again, to solve for A, we're going to want to use the law of sines, and we're going to want to make sure A is in the numerator. So I'll say sine of A over A is equal to. We have the ratio of C, so that'd be the sine of 68 degrees all over 18. And again, we've already worked on this last class period, so I'm just going to write this next one to solve for A. Oops, I'm sorry, we know what A is, which is 19. So therefore, A equals sine inverse of, um, A equals sine inverse of 19 times the sine of 68 degrees all over 18. Now, do you guys need me to show you again how to do that on the calculator, or can I just type it in and figure the answer, and you guys can verify with me? Is that how it works? OK. So let's go ahead and type that into our calculator. You can type it all at one time. Um, just be careful when you guys are typing stuff in. Make sure you're using your parentheses. So make sure it's already. Make sure your calculator is already in degree mode. So I have. Um, Sign and if you guys didn't already get calculators, you guys can grab them on the back if you want to verify your stuff with me instead of walking right in front of the video camera, but that's okay. So we have sine of 68 divided by 18 times 19. And then we do sine inverse. And I am getting A equals 78.15. Let's round this to the nearest thousandth. Now, the next thing we'll want to go ahead and do is um, we're going to want to store this answer. OK, we're not going to want to use, uh, you know, we can use this as our final, like we can use this angle as our answer, but we want to make sure we store A. So I'm going to go and get store, and then I'm going to, so stow, and then I'm going to hit alpha A. And again, when I go over the next, pro I can show you guys this again, but we'll have, go ahead and store alpha A. OK, now, do you guys want to finish solving this and then check for the second triangle? Or yeah, let's go and finish this. Let's just go and finish this. The next one, we've got to find B. So to find angle B, we know that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So to find angle B, all I'm going to do is say 180 degrees minus my stored angle A minus 68. So that's why we like storing it, because we don't have to retype the problem again. So we'll do 180 minus alpha A minus 68 degrees. And I get here 33.848. That means I stored it in my calculator. So. I'm going to store that answer as angle B as well. So that's going to be 33.848. OK? Yes, no, maybe so? Good? OK. Now, the next thing, though, guys, is we need to solve for like little b, right? So if we're going to finish this. we got to go ahead and solve for little b. So therefore, I can use a law of signs. Um, again, and now I'm going to solve for b, but I'm going to want to make sure b is in the denominator. And when I'm solving on this example, 
Um, what I'm solving in this case, we're going to want to have b in the uh, numerator, because that's what I'm solving for, over sine of b, which is stored in my calculator, equals, now again, we could use a over a or c over c, but since c um, was given to us, c and big c was given to us, that's what I'm going to use. Now, go ahead and solve it for b. b equals the sine of stored b times 18 over the sine of 68 degrees. So we go ahead and type that into our calculator, sine of stored b times 18 divided by the sine of 68. And I get 6.657. We'll round that. All right. Now it's important that once we do this, we want to check using kind of the hinge theorem of geometry to make sure that does the smallest angle have the smallest side, and does the largest angle have the largest side? Does this kind of work? Yes. Yes, it does work, right? OK, so now we've kind of solved for this one. But what if my question was saying, hey, is there one, two, or no triangles? Right? Is there another triangle that works? We know that, no, we know that it makes a triangle because we're able to confirm it. If we did this first sign inverse and we got an error, then we know the problem there would be no triangle exists. Like the information provided does not create a triangle. That happens when you guys have that error off the bat. Um, but in this case, we know one triangle exists. What about a second triangle? So again, we got to understand, guys, what is happening with sine inverse. When we're doing sine inverse, our calculator, so we're doing the sine inverse of, or here's our angle A is 78 degrees. 78 degrees is right here. Let's just round it to 78 degrees, OK? Now, if we were to think about that, like on the unit circle, is there another angle where you take the sine of that angle, you're going to have the same y coordinate? Wait, where did you get 78 degrees from? That's the angle that we found, A. Okay. Right? And I'm just rounding it for easy, ease of use. Wouldn't you guys agree that these two angles have the same y coordinate? Or at least they're supposed to if I drew them correctly? Yeah. Right? Now, so that means, now what exactly is this angle, though? Like, that's the reference angle. So what is this angle? It would be the 180. Huh? What is that angle? What is that measure of that angle? 102, right? Because 78 and 78 and this angle, 102, are supplementary. So all if I got to do, now again, let's, well, I'll come back to this in a second. You, would you guys agree that the sine of 78 degrees is equal to the sine of 102 degrees? Would you say that their y coordinate is exactly the same? Yes. Yes, right? Yes. For B, I keep getting 10 to 180. Oh. Well, why don't you guys say something? So maybe let's make sure I didn't, oh, I didn't store my B. Oops, no wonder. So 180, let me make sure my alpha A is correct. Sorry about that, I didn't store big B. Sign of alpha B. What'd you get? What is your B? B is 33.84, right? OK, and then sine of B. So the sine of alpha B times 18. Did you guys divide it by sine of 68? OK, there we go. I don't know what I typed in wrong. Thank you. Oh, good catch. So that's 10.813. OK, now let's go back to the second case. You guys agree that the sine of 78 degrees and sine of 102 is the same, right? 
Now, here's the problem. When you guys do sine inverse, which we did over here, when you do sine inverse, your graphing calculator is only going to give you sine 78 degrees. It's not going to give you 102 degrees, even though the sine of those two angles is the same. Why does it only give you that one angle? Because again, remember the inverse function is restricted. It's only going to give you that angle in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant, right? It only gives you that positive or the negative right here. It's not going to give you the obtuse angle. However, is it possible that our triangle, our, our triangle that we create, could have an angle of 78 degrees, or it could also have an angle of 102? Is it just possible? Yes. Yeah, those are both angles that could be a possibility. So what we need to do is, since the acute or the obtuse angle have the same sign, sine inverse only gives you the acute. So we have to check the obtuse. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this A2. So it's really A2 of our second case. So I'm just going to call this my case number two. So we solved case number one. Now we're going to work on case number two. So what, I'm, what we mean by case number two is we have the exact same triangle. This is still 68 degrees. This is still 19. This is still 18. But A, we're going to say, is now obtuse. Because couldn't A be obtuse as well as be acute? It could, and let's see what it is. So now, rather than, rather than, um, simple, rather than estimating, we don't want to do that. We want to take 180 degrees minus A that we stored. And we're going to store that as, or we're going to figure out that value. So now I'm going to do 180 minus alpha A. And I get 101.848. So does this, could this be a possibility? Could that angle be 101.848 and then have 68 degrees? Yes. yes, it works, right? Now, so that means this example has two triangles. However, let's just pretend, what if, what if this angle ended up being like 150 degrees? Is it possible to have 150 plus 68? No, so therefore only one triangle would exist. So even though you could test the obtuse angle, it wouldn't create another triangle. But in this example, two triangles can be created. All right. So I am going to store this as my new A. So I'm just going to take this new answer, and I'm going to store that as my new A. So store alpha A. OK, so now alpha A is 101.8484628. Don't want to use the rounded answer. Make sure you use the whole answer. Um, so now I need to figure out a new B, right? So we're going to say B2. So what would B2 be? Well, B2 is 180 degrees minus my new stored A minus 68 degrees, right? You guys agree with me on that, hopefully. So we do 180 minus stored A minus 68. And I'm getting 10.152 if I round it. And I'm going to call that my new stored B. So now I'm going to store that as alpha B. Are you guys OK with the storing and everything? Do you guys want me to go back over that next problem? Yeah? Sure. OK. So now we have A, and we found B. So the only thing I need to check is small b. Now again, since we're solving for small b, we're going to put small b in, in the numerator here. So I'll have b over the sine of stored b equals, let's again use c, which is 18, over the sine of 68 degrees. So therefore, b equals the sine of my new stored b times 18 over the sine of 68 degrees. So it's really the same thing I did way over here. It's just with new b's, though, right? So I do sine of alpha b times 18 divided by the sine of 68. And I am getting b equals 3.42. And does it make sense, guys, for b to be kind of small in this example? Right? Because look how small that angle had to be. right? So a really small angle is going to produce a really small side. 
right? Which is different than this one, but this one made sense. And so does this triangle make sense? Yes? No? Yeah. Maybe so? Okay. And there you go. That is your ambiguous case. Yes? Pythagorean theorem only works 